Hi, my name is Taki and in this video, we will discuss about the fundamentals of object-oriented programming. Welcome to Object-Oriented Programming or OOP. Before we start, let's discuss some fundamental questions and answers. For example, why do you need this kind of programming? Or how can this concept make your life easier? If you know the answer of these questions, your learning path will be easy and you will be able to relate to these concepts in various ways. But before you start, there are two warning messages for you. Number one, do not lose your motivation if you cannot understand everything after the first pass. In many cases, it may seem complicated, but gradually it will be easier for you. Number two, many developers criticize the concept of object-oriented programming. But please remember that each human mind tends to criticize new things. So even if you want to criticize this concept, I suggest that you first understand it properly, use the concept in various applications, and then make your own decision about whether to appreciate or criticize. Now, let us begin the journey. Computer programming started with binary code and mechanical switches were used to load the programs. It is easy to assume that programmers' life was very challenging in those days. To make programmers' lives easy, some high-level programming languages were developed and in those languages, some simple English-like instructions were used. But you should not forget the fact that a computer can understand instruction only in a binary language. So the compiler's primary job was to translate these English-like instructions into binaries and eventually these high-level languages gained in popularity. Over a period of time, computer capacity and capabilities increased a lot. Then developers started developing complex applications. Unfortunately, none of the programming languages that were available at that time was mature enough to handle all the applications effectively. Some of the primary concerns were number one is how can I avoid duplicate efforts or how can I reuse existing code? In structured programming, ay sinusundan kasi natin yung ating top-down approach. So kung kailangan natin ng uh, same code or sabihin natin same process, kailangan natin uh, i-duplicate yung ating code na nasa taas kasi hindi natin sila makokol. And, uh, kay object-oriented, yung pong reusing of codes ay napakadaling gawin. No, hindi na po natin kailangang i-encode ulit yung mga uh, methods or yung ating mga codes na same doon sa unang process. So, instead na gagawa tayo ng bagong code, ay uh, ikokol na lang natin yung ating method or functions na nagawa na kaparehas po nung uh, gagawin natin sa susunod na program. Okay, pangalawa naman is how can I control the use of global variables in a shared environment? Yung tinutukoy po dito is yung handling of data. Okay, number three, how can I debug the code when too much jumping is occurring? So, meron tayong tinatawag dati na go to na keyword. So, ibig sabihin, ay same sila dun sa nauna. So, instead na i-duplicate yung ating code, ay pinapabalik natin sila dun sa line of code. Go to line number 10. Halimbawa, no? so meaning, from 10 papunta pababa na code, ay uulitin po niya yung process. Since nandito siya sa baba, kailangan niyang pagdaanan yung go to na keyword, babalik lang po, maglulup lang din. So, yun po yung mga naging problema sa non-OOP concept na programming. And then, uh, pang-apat is how can I make a new engineer's life 
easier no paano mo mapapadali kung ikaw mismo na programmer ay hindi mo po kayang mapadali yung coding process po natin Okay, and lastly, how can I maintain a large code base in a better way? So, sa structured programming, mas lumalaki yung, yung system, mas lalong nahirapan po paano tayo mag debug ng program. Okay, so to solve these problems, expert programmers started breaking the large problem into smaller problems. The idea behind this philosophy was very simple. If you can solve these smaller problems, eventually, you can solve the big problem. Tama nga naman, ano? So, they started portioning the big problems into small chunks and the concept of functions or procedures or subroutines develop. So, each function was dedicated to solve one small problem. So, managing this function and the interactions among them became the key focus and the concept of structured programming was created. Structured programming was a big hit because managing small function is easy and you can debug them easily. At the same time, developers also started limiting the use of global variables which were replaced with local variables in functions in most of the cases. Okay, so pasadaan natin si structured programming. Structured programming was popular for almost two decades. During this time, the capacity of hardware increased significantly. So developers wanted to solve more complex tasks and gradually the limitation of structured programming became more prominent. Now, for example, consider these following cases. Suppose in your application you have used particular data type across multiple functions in an application. So later you identified that you need to change the data type. As a, as a result, you need to implement the changes across functions across the application. Meaning, Halimbawa ay gusto nating palitan yung ating data type ng ating variable. Supposedly, ang nilagay po natin ay decimal. Okay? So, sa quantity, decimal ang nailagay natin. Pero yung pong application natin ay intended sa, sa ganitong uh, agency na ang kailangan lang nila is whole number. Okay? Yung quantity is whole number. Wala naman silang mga kalakalahating mga quantity. So, kailangan palitan natin yung ating data type sa quantity into integer. Okay? When we talk integer and uh, decimal, magkaiba po yun. Ano? Kapag integer, kinukuha lang po natin yung ating whole numbers. Okay? So, sa ating structured programming, kailangan palitan mo po yung buong uh, uh, functions natin, yung pong buong application na hanapin mo yung quantity na data type natin, papalitan natin from decimal into integer. So, ang hirap pong maghanap kasi lahat po ng mga nagawa natin, na-duplicate natin uh, codes natin later on ay papalitan natin sa buong application natin. Another scenario, it is difficult to model all real-world scenarios with the key components of structured programming such as the data and the functions. No? So in real-world, whenever you create a product, there are two areas you need to focus. Una-una yung kanyang purpose, bakit natin kailangan yung produkto, at yung kanyang behavior. So how can the product make your life easier? No? Then the idea of objects came into existence. Si Alan Curtis K is a widely considered one of the fathers of object-oriented programming, which he named along with some colleagues at the Palo Alto Research Center or formerly known as the Xerox Park. So, ulitin natin, ano, ano ba ang pinagkaiba ni structured programming at kay object-oriented programming ano so in object oriented programming instead of focusing on the operations on data kay structured programming you know kay op we focus on the data itself okay now ano po ang object oriented 
programming. Object-oriented programming is an approach to software development in which the structure of the software is based on the objects interacting with each other to accomplish a task. So if you look at how you accomplish tasks in the world around you, you can see that you interact in an object-oriented world. Okay, pag gising mo, binuksan natin ang agad ang mga cellphone natin or TV, no? a television object consists of other objects that interact with each other like a remote control, an outlet to turn on the TV. We also have ceiling fan or electric fan, coffee maker, vacuum cleaners, etc. In mobile phone, we have phone book or contacts. A contact object has different fields like name of the contact person, his or her phone number, address, and so forth. To me, in case of paligid, ang dami, no? We are all surrounded with objects. Many objects are similar in function but different in purpose. Yun nga lang bathtubs and a kitchen sink. For example, you know, they both provide water and are used for cleaning. But it is rare occasion when you will take a bath in a kitchen sink or maghuhugas ka ng pinggan sa ating bathtub. Pero ang titignan mo, parehas naman po yung itsura. However, the bathtub and a kitchen sink in your house probably share the same plumbing or certainly they share a common interface. They have hot and cold water knobs, a faucet, and a drain. Okay? When you think about it, what is the difference between a sink and a bathtub? Siyempre, yung kanilang location, yung size, their height of the ground, siyempre yung pong lababo nasa uh, level po natin ng bewang, no? So, how many more similarities are there than uh, differences? So, if you want to go to store, for example, you interact with a car object. A car object consists of other objects that interact with each other to accomplish the task of getting you to go to store, you put the key in the ignition object and turn it. Ibig sabihin, you send the message through an electrical signal to the starter object which interacts with the engine object to start the car. As a driver, you are isolated from the logic of how the object of the system work together to start the car. You just initiate the sequence of events by executing the start method of the ignition object with a key. You then wait for a response message of success or failure. OOP concepts started surfacing in the mid-1960s with a programming language called Simula and further evolved in 1970s with advent of small talk. All the software developers did not overwhelming embrace these early advances in OOP language. Object-oriented methodologies continued to evolve. A resurgence of interest in object-oriented methodologies occurred in the mid-1980s. Specifically, OOP languages such as the C++ and IFL became popular with mainstream computer programmers. OOP continued to grow in popularity in the 1990s, most notably with the advent of Java and the huge following it attracted. And in 2002, in conjunction with the release of the .NET framework, Microsoft introduced a new object-oriented programming language, a C-sharp and revamped Visual Basic so that it is truly an OOP language. I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope this was helpful for you. Please like and subscribe for more upcoming.